Well, joining us now in the studio is the lovely and talented Eric Alper. Maybe not as lovely and talented as what happened 40 years ago this weekend. That's right. I turned seven. <laughs> oh, no, no. Actually, no. The Clash, the self-proclaimed only band that mattered, released their self-titled debut album 40 years ago this weekend. Most of The Clash's debut album was recorded on the 18th floor of the Council High Rise building in London, Harold Road, which was rented by Mick Jones from the band, his grandmother, and his grandmother used to frequently attend their live concerts. The entire album was recorded over three weekend sessions for a cost of $6,000 in today's money. The Clash the debut album really kickstarted the whole punk movement. And although I never got to see them, you did. I saw them um, and it was, it will be ingrained on my mind, although I can't remember the month. I was 16. Um, it was the fall. It was England. I went to see Susie and the Banshees in um, in the Midlands in England. Wow! And the Clash was playing with them, and boy, was that that, that was, was an some, experience. That yeah, was it came something. out. Everything changed. Everything changed. That's why we're talking about the greatest debut album of, of all time. And coming up are the Doors. Yeah, we couldn't get much higher. Come on, baby, light my fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. If you wanted to craft the perfect debut rock album, you probably wouldn't mix Willie Dixon's Blues, Bach with John Coltrane charts, 12th century Celtic mix with ancient Greek tragedy, topped off with plenty of teenage ants and a healthy dose of psychedelic, but then you wouldn't be The Doors now, would you? That is what the de- the debut album from The Doors meant and sounded like. In in, uh, in 1967, it has the single Break On Through to the Other Side, The End, and Light My Fire. The band was also involved with the first. To promote the album, the record label rented a massive billboard looming over Sunset Strip. The advertising medium had previously was used for promoting food and cigarettes and films and a host of other products, but this was the first time that a rock band had ever appeared on a billboard. The band had started to record their debut album, The Ramones, back in January of 1976, needing only seven days and $4,600 to record the record. The album cover, featuring the four members leaning against a brick wall in New York City, cost only $125 for the photo, which has become one of the most imitated album cover art of all time. In 2012, the Ramones' debut album was preserved by the National Recording Registry, deeming it culturally, historically, and significant. Not bad for a record that took 38 years to go gold, selling 500,000 copies. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. By mid-1966, Jimi Hendrix was struggling to earn a living playing in an R&B band as a backing guitarist. Fast forward just one year later, he created a new group called The Experience. And Are You Experience contains some of Jimi Hendrix's best-known songs, including Purple Haze, Hey Joe, and The Wind Cries Mary. In 2005, Rolling Stone magazine voted Are You Experience 15th on its list of the 500 greatest albums of all time. Upon me, sir. It's friends from my mind I'm just looking forward to dear friend of mine I'm waiting for my man One of music's greatest producers, Brian Eno, once called the Velvet Underground and Nico's album, okay. It sold 30,000 copies, but every single one of those people who bought an album started a band. And you have a Velvet Underground story, too. I Well, no, I, I loved... I, my favorite song um, is with Maureen Tucker, but you 
after hours. Right. If you close the door, the night yeah. would last I'll never forever. do you again. Yeah. yeah, and that's it's just such a lovely song. That's and, by the way the the first gets... time I will ever sing on this on this. Yeah, channel. me too. So <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. But but a great band. Yeah. Absolutely, with the Velvet Underground and Nico, you can pretty much put the blame or success depending on where you are with art rock, punk garage, grunge, shoegaze, gothic, indie, and alternative rock. If you're ever looking for where alternative rock started, look no further than the Velvet Underground and Nico debut album. See all these uh, treats that mm-hmm. uh, Eric. Uh, Every and, step and, starts and, with the first. And speaking of uh, singing, I I did that, and it was isolated, and it I was shamed. <laughs> and it Tune never, in next week where I just posed about this thing, and we, all three of us start a trio. <laughs> we'll do song of the eighties. Uh, oh, let's not. Okay. Let, let, let's just right. let's not do it to those yeah. poor people out there. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. And we'll chat with you uh, next week. Eric Alper is brought to you by Roar Records, proud to support the indie voice.